In this video, you will learn with very simple examples and visualizations everything about conditionals and comparison operators in JavaScript. So first, let's see what comparison operators are. Let's consider as an example, a Facebook feature to display birthdays of its users. So basically, if today is your birthday, Facebook will show a birthday icon and will send notifications to all your friends. And for Facebook to check whether it's your birthday today, basically it has to compare today with your birth date, right? So that comparison or equals in JavaScript is expressed with three comparison signs like this. So one comparison sign is reserved for assigning variables as we saw in one of my previous videos of variables. So double or triple equal signs are used to check the equality of two values. So let's see the difference between the two. So let's say I have a variable age 30. So if I compare value of variable age to 30, then I get true, right? If I triple compare that, I also get true. So same results. Now, if I compare the value with a string representation of 30, I also get true. However, if I triple check, I get false. And this is a difference between these two. The double comparison checks equality of the values on two th sides. So checks the value here, checks the value here and compares them by the value. The triple equality compares value and also the type, the data type of those values. So if I have a number here and a number here, which are the same values, then it's going to be true. If I have a number value here, which is defined here and a string value here of the same value, I get false because the data types are not the same. So that's the difference. And obviously if I put here another value, it's going to be false in any case, right? Like this or like this doesn't really matter. And that little difference can actually have a big impact. That's why this concept is important in JavaScript. General rule is that you should in most cases use the triple equation to compare two values. Now let's consider another example where you order something on Amazon and it says that shipping is free above purchase of 20 euros. So when you add things to your cart program checks, whether your order total is above 20 or below 20, and then calculates the shipment costs based on that. And let's say it charges you five euros. If your, if your total order is under 20 euros. So now we don't have the equal check anymore, but rather is it higher or is it lower? So the way to check that is let's clear this. So let's define the variables. So you have the total price. Let's say you gathered items that are 19 euros. And now the program checks if total price is greater than 20 euros, you get a Boolean expression of false because this condition is wrong. In the same way, the program can also check the opposite direction. So it can check whether your total price is below 20. But notice that we don't check for value 20. So what happens if the total price is exactly 20? So basically here we need to check that if total price is below 20 or 20 euros, in both cases, you get charged for the shipping. So in order to do that, you can combine those two expressions and say like this. So either it should be less than 20 or it should be exactly 20 for that to be true. And as you see, each of these comparisons return to you a Boolean expression of either false or true. Only one of these outcomes is possible. So what this means is that in the program, you check if this condition comes out as true, then you want to offer free shipping. Otherwise, you want to charge five euros for shipping. And the way it's going to be written inside of the program using JavaScript syntax is if total price is greater than 20, here will be code that let's say calculates 
um, or sets the price of shipping. So here we set it to zero. There is no shipping cost. Otherwise is expressed with else shipping cost equals to five euros. So this is how the conditions are used in JavaScript to check the condition and based on that do either this or if we switched that condition, we can also check if total price is less than or equal to 20, then shipping cost will be set to five. Otherwise, the shipping cost will be zero. So to go back to some technical terms in JavaScript, this here is called if else statements. Whatever is inside if is called a condition. So this thing here that evaluates to either true or false is a condition. And this here that compares those two values is called a comparison operator. So greater, smaller, equals, etc. All these are comparison operators. But let's say you have a case where you have three different shipping costs, right? So for example, if the price is below 10 euros, you get charged five euro shipping costs. If it's below 20, you get charged only three euros. And if it's above 20, you get charged nothing. Now you don't have if else only, but you have three conditions. It's also super simple to do that with if else. So basically you check again if total price is less than or equal to 10, you get charged five euros. And here you are gonna say else if, which is another statement where you can write the conditional, where we're gonna check where the total price is less than or equal to 20. In that case, you get charged three euros and there comes our final else, which is zero. So now I have three conditions here. So the first condition here says it's less than or equal to 10. The first one checks another condition. And the third one, um, important thing to note here that the last else or the, the else here doesn't have a condition explicitly, but it implies that both of these above conditions were false. So both of them were wrong. Be, and because it's implicit, we don't have to check it explicitly here. So you could also go here and do that. Else if the price is greater than 20. And this will work just fine. However, because it's implicit, we don't need that. So we saw comparisons between two values using equals, higher or lower. The final operator is not equals. For example, consider a feature where a web application checks whether user is a premium member or not. Obviously, if you are not a premium user, you won't see the cool features they have, or you won't be able to access some premium content. So when you log in, program will check is user membership premium, so with equals, or it can check user membership not premium. And in order to express that negative comparison, you use this syntax. So not equals in JavaScript is expressed with exclamation mark and double equals. And to show that in if else statement, let's say if user membership is not premium, show user non premium contents, or maybe even recommend a premium upgrade as a marketing measure and else show premium contents. And finally, you can combine all these conditions. So for example, if today is your birthday and you have displayed that on your profile, only then the program will show the notification. So both conditions must be true. So if today's date is the same as your birth date and birthday displayed is true. So here you can use a comparison with uh, Boolean true or false. So both these conditions must be true for notification to be sent. And in JavaScript, the syntax for end is this. So this basically is also a valid condition that you can also put inside of the if condition. So if this whole thing is true, then show notification else do not. Or another example, back to the shipment cost, 
let's say you don't pay for the shipment if the total price is over 20 euros or you have Amazon Prime account. So the way to express that would be total price over 20 euros or Amazon Prime equals true. So here only one of them has to be true for you to get free shipment or in JavaScript is expressed with double pipes. And again, you can put that in if statement and say if either this or this is true, then give a free shipment, otherwise don't. And you can also use negation in conditions. For example, you want to check whether this whole thing is false. And the way to do that is using the exclamation mark and the brackets. So basically this will check whether this whole condition is false. Now, even if you understood all these concepts, it's always a good idea to practice them yourself so that you get it better. So because of that, I'm going to put a link to practical exercises for conditionals and competitors in the uh, video description below. So make sure to check that out and practice yourself with a couple of examples. And once you do that, you can come back for another JavaScript video. And if you don't want to miss that, you can subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so that you get notified when the next video is out. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.